the title here today is how to pass the FA written in less time. I want to show how you can use the latest tools, online products, et cetera, to get ready for that knowledge test. And what you'll find if you do this the correct way, it's going to make you much more educated for the entire flight training process. And, and that'll show as you get ready for your check ride as well with an FAA examiner. Uh, that's our location there at Sporties on the left-hand side. We're at the Claremont County Airport, just east of Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, that's our headquarters where we do all our fulfillment and shipping for all the pilot supplies. But uh, also very interesting, we have a flight school there, as you'll see uh, many of the aircraft on the flight line alongside the hangars. Uh, we're up to about 22 airplanes now. And that's where I got my start. I learned to fly at Sporties back in 2000. Wanted to do it professionally initially, wanted to fly the airlines, but never left Sporties. It's such a great place and get to do a lot of, like I said, both fun and, and recreational flying. So I instructed there primarily uh, early 2000s. Today, I still work with the flight school uh, in a stage check capacity. So I work with a lot of students, uh, getting them ready for check rides. And then on the electronic side, doing our coursework development for our online pilot training courses. So a good mix of training both electronically and in person and really stay up with what's evolving and, and trending in the knowledge test itself as it relates to what we're gonna talk about today. Quick overview, I'm gonna talk about the FAA test itself and you'll see it interchangeably here on these slides. I'll use both terms. It's the written test. That's that's what the old timers call it because it used to be a written test presented with the book and paper and you filled out the multiple choice answers and handed it back to the proctor. Uh, but really officially it's called the knowledge test. You'll hear it both ways depending on who you're talking to. I'm gonna review when should you take the test because there's many different opinions on that and I'll ex express some of my personal opinions based on where you're at in your flight training journey. When to prepare for the test, that's equally important, uh, as, as you're juggling a lot of things during the flight training process with your instructor, trips to the airport, the exciting part of actually getting in the airplane, of course, that's why we're doing this. And then the big part of this will be how to effectively use a test prep course to prepare for the test. Not a requirement, but as you'll see here, it'll make the process a breeze and guarantee you'll get a very high score along the way. Now, we're gonna be hyper-focused on the knowledge test. That's just one step of the flight training journey. Um, but let's take a step back and look at what's all involved in getting a private pilot certificate. The various facets, there's the ground school training. And in the good old days, as I call it, that was often done in classrooms with a teacher or flight instructor, uh, a transition to then one-on-one -on -one with the ground instructor at the airport, at the, uh, at the local cafe or the different instructor areas. Today, it's that part's really transitioned more to a self-study process. Uh, most of the flight schools I Talk to, including Sporties Academy and, and schools we see around the country, have transitioned that ground school training process to the student because of all the excellent online and mobile app resources that are out there. But that is one of the requirements. And again, it it's, can be done in a, a multiple uh, different uh, variety of ways. Of course, there's the flight training aspect. That's the fun part, as we all know. That's getting in the airplane where we get the minimum of 40 hours of flight time, more likely in the probably 50 or 60 hour range in the national average. There's the milestone of the FAA knowledge test that we're gonna talk about today. And then we're gonna build up to all that where you complete the FAA check ride, which is a couple hours of oral examination with either an FAA inspector or a designated pilot examiner. And then the flight test, which is another about hour and a half process. Today, we're gonna to focus on the knowledge test aspect of it. And what's it look like? It's a 60 question multiple choice test. You'll have three answers. So pretty standard in terms of the standardized test formatting. You have a two hour time limit. That's more than enough for this test. I'd say most students are done well within an hour, typically when they're well prepared. You need a minimum of a 70% score. So it's either pass or fail. And when you are completed with that, you'll get your knowledge test results and it'll have the score on there. Uh, and, and you're gonna have some codes on there also that explain what question categories you missed. And you'll present that to your examiner when you go to take the check ride. Now the guidance for the test is based in what's called the Airman Certification Standards. And many times in, in kind of what I call the old days and pre-electronic study, a lot of uh, pilots didn't see the Airman Certification Standards till the very end of their training. And that was just due to a rushed flow. Maybe the instructor didn't involve it as much, uh, but this should be something you look at early on in your training just to become familiar with it. And what it's gonna outline is all the various tasks and knowledge areas you need to know as you prepare for your check ride. And part of that is it dictates also the content that will be on the actual knowledge test. Now it's a little tricky and even being around this for 25 plus years, you're not gonna use the ACS as really a study tool. It's more just awareness of the different content items on there. But what I think is a little more helpful within the ACS is to give this breakdown 
of the percentage of questions to expect based on the requirements of the federal aviation regulations, uh, part 61. Again, this kind of narrows it down a little bit more, gives you a bigger picture view of, of what the topics that are gonna be covered on there. And as you'll see when we get into our live course demo here, as you study cat categories of questions, they correlate directly with this. Uh, so the study tools will reference and align with what the actual subject areas are. But as you can see, there's only a couple here that have more than 10% possible of, of questions in terms of the regulations and safe and efficient operations. Again, not gonna really guide you in how you study, but just more awareness of what the topics are gonna be on the test. You're allowed to bring in an E6B. An E6B, for those that are new, is a electronic, or it could be a manual or electronic flight computer. It'll allow you to do basic calculations and conversions. So you'll find that helpful to have on the test. Uh, Sporties makes one there, as you can see. ASA makes a really nice E6B also. Or you can learn the mechanical E6B, what we call the old whiz wheel, back from the old war technology and flight planning. It still works just as well today. You also want to bring your sectional plotter, and that's your essentially a ruler that allows you to measure courses and distances on a aviation chart. And while there are less questions we're hearing today related to flight planning, it is helpful just to have to line up on charts or even just use as a straight edge to help uh, manipulate some of the data. You will be provided in the testing facility with a supplement book. This will have uh, about 70 or 80 different figures and charts. You can download this right now online from the FAA website. It's available in the Sporties Learn to Fly course that we'll talk about here. Uh, and you'll wanna be familiar with that in advance. I wouldn't necessarily say I'd open it up and study it, but at least flip through it just to be aware of what all the different figures are. And then as you go through and, and practice questions in online uh, study tools, take practice tests, you'll be exposed to each of those electronically to uh, answer each question along the way. And you'll be given blank paper and pencil to take any notes or write some calculations down along the way. Now, when should you plan on taking the test? Very important. Uh, of course, the end goal, it has to be completed before you take your final FAA check ride. But as I mentioned, some people like to take it before they even step foot at the airport. And whether you do that or not really depends on your flight training speed, as we'll say. Now on the very fast end, you'll see this a lot at the big schools in Florida that are preparing pilots with zero time to get ready for the airlines in 12 to 18 months. They're gonna expect you to have some prerequisites ahead of time. And we used to do this at Sporties, we did accelerated training. And one of the prerequisites was you had to have your knowledge test completed before you even started flight training. Cause you're gonna be doing two lessons a day, five days a week. And you had to have that ground knowledge ready ahead of time, have the test taken ahead of time so you could just focus on the flying at the airport. Now that works for some people, it doesn't work for everyone. I'd say the more traditional flight training process is you're gonna do <clears throat> two to three lessons per week at the airport. That's really the ideal schedule if you can accomplish that. And in that regard, I wouldn't take the test right away. I wouldn't cram for it. I would rather get through your first 20 hours, 25 hours or so, complete your first solo, start getting into the cross country phase, and then start really preparing for that knowledge test. <clears throat> and what you'll find there is by going through the online ground school and the normal course of your training, you're gonna feel much more prepared to answer the questions and they're gonna come more naturally to you just based on your experience operating in the airplane and the uh, airport environment. So the results are good for 24 calendar months uh, and you have to be a minimum of 15 years of age to take the test. So if there's some younger uh, in the audience here, uh, you know, if you have to have be 17 to get your private pilot certificate. So 15 years for the test really should be the uh, starting point is, is a practical answer uh, for when uh, the minimum age should be. So I'll continue to reference kind of some of the old school training. And I went through some of this in the early 2000s before computers and as the internet kind of spooled up at that time and we downloaded the content via CD-ROM or even uh, 3.5 inch floppy disks. But we didn't even have software then to take the test or prepare for it. We used books and these books were hundreds of pages. They had lots of questions, multiple choice answers and some explanations. And you would go through that book and just memorize the answer over and over and over, highlight it, flip the pages until you felt comfortable on each page. And a lot of the time there you're not referencing any study material, you're just looking at the question, doing a strict rote memorization of the answer. You probably had access to some FAA handbooks that you then have to manually open up separately, find the chapter and the paragraph that corresponded to it. If you were an overachiever, to learn more about the material. Uh, but it really was a time consuming way to study. Didn't keep track of your progress. It didn't find your weak areas, um, but it got the job done. And at that time too, this, this kind of sounds crazy to say, 
uh, FA published all the questions in advance that were on the test, right down to the exact number of a takeoff distance or the distance for a flight planning problem. So I knew a lot of students back at that point that would just memorize the, the actual number. I know if I see a question for a 172 takeoff distance at this airport, the answer is going to be 1,324 feet. So if I remember the number 1324, I'm going to see it on the test and answer it. Obviously, very uh, not a very good way to understand the material, but that's how people got through the test then. So fortunately, FAA has made a lot of changes in the test over the years. It's gotten a lot better. It's a lot more practical now. So it does, doesn't re re depend on rote recall and rote memorization. And that's why I really recommend using a full featured online study preparation course um, to prepare you for the test. And today we're gonna to be talking about mainly Sporty's Learn to Fly course, as David mentioned. And this is a uh, interactive and engaging video training course that we really focus at Sporties on preparing pilots to be good pilots. And along the way, you're gonna be prepared for the tests. Um, <clears throat> but we're not just a test preparation company. <clears throat> and we're not just teaching to the test. We're teaching well above that, well above the standards. So by the time you get to the actual knowledge test study features, you're well prepared and feel very comfortable with that process. And more importantly, you feel much more comfortable in the airplane as well for your flight lessons. Great thing about this course, as you go through it, self-study when you're finished you will get the endorsement which we'll talk about here a little bit later uh, there is an endorsement required to take the knowledge test at the testing facility uh, but the online course will give that for you automatically after meeting the minimum requirements and of course then the other option if you don't do a self-study course is for a flight instructor to prepare you for the test which is a, obviously a much more expensive option and time-consuming option and then at the completion when the instructor feels you're ready they would then sign your logbook to go ahead and take the knowledge test. Uh, so the interactive self-study feature is really uh, a much, much more efficient way to go about that. A big part of the content from the questions comes from the FAA handbooks. Um, so just to review, we mentioned the Airman Certification Standards really sets the outline for all the different possibilities of what could be on the test. The core training then, the actual study part, comes from the FAA handbooks. And so I, I don't recommend going out and just reading these start to finish cover to cover. I know some pilots like to do that. You do, don't need to do that necessarily. My recommendation is to go through the video course first, watch all the video training, and then supplement your knowledge with per, uh, certain parts of a book like the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, uh, the Airplane Flying Handbook, the Aviation Weather Handbook to find more information. And you'll see here in the test questions as you study, we have links back to each pertinent chapter that relates to that question. <clears throat> so it makes that study process and the ability to recall information much more efficient. And all these books here are included digitally in the uh, Learn to Fly course, as you'll see coming up. So a key point, uh, treat the knowledge test prep as an integral part of your personal study course and your ground training, not as a rote memorization exercise to pass the test. And this will make you much more prepared for, for really everything about the flight training process. And for those that are going to be going through a Part 141 school, those are typically the colleges, universities, uh, professional pilot training programs that have a more regimented curriculum. It's going to prepare you for <clears throat> better for the stage checks as well that come along the way, uh, make you much more prepared for that process. And then by diving deeper into the challenging questions as you study, it's going to strengthen your knowledge of the aviation system overall. So much more than the test prep course, I, I like to really use that line a lot because that's what we focus on. And uh, by going into the in-depth content, in-depth video training, a test preparation tool, uh, but then also a video flight maneuvers guide. It's an important part for preparing for your flight lessons uh, before each day you head out to the airport, that full FA handbook library. And then at the end, there's a check right prep feature, <clears throat> excuse me, that'll prepare you for the actual FAA uh, exam with a designated examiner at the end of your training. Now, for you as a student, it's going to help bring challenging concepts to life, much more than reading a book or doing a one-on-one -on -one ground lesson. You're going to see the actual airplane. You're going to see airports, see the flight controls, lots of 3D animations to help explain the, the more complicated concepts. Of course, save you time and money. Um, the course regularly sells for $2.99, and as David mentioned, is on sale this week as part of EAA's Learn to Fly Week. Uh, but that's that's less than the cost of one flight lesson. And I can tell you right now, it'll save you many, many more flight lessons and ground lessons based on your study there. Working with students, um, when my students initially were doing this, they were watching this course on DVD. Uh, today, of course, online and in, in mobile apps. 
but I could tell right away for each lesson if a student was prepared in advance and really made them much more prepared for each lesson by going through those uh, ground lessons and ground training videos in advance on their own time. And then of course the self-study for the knowledge test component. Now the benefits for your instructor, they'll be able to monitor your progress in your course. So they'll be able to see which video lessons you've completed. They'll be able to see how you have performed on your practiced FAA tests. And again, while their endorsement is not required since the course will provide that, many instructors still like to see how their students are progressing along the way <clears throat> to make sure they are meeting their milestones as you progress through the flight training process. Uh, so you'll be able to share your progress from your course with your instructor and they'll be able to check that out to make sure you're uh, up to standards and up to specs on that. When you access our Sporties Learn to Fly course, you buy it once, it's a, it's a one-time price, there's no subscriptions, you get to keep it forever. You get lifetime updates. So every year we're adding new content, new videos, we're always updating the test prep component based on new questions that show up on the test, new answers, new FA resources, et cetera. Um, it also includes access in a multiple uh, variety of formats. So online in a web browser, the dedicated iOS and Android apps. Uh, we call them the pilot training apps if you search for that on the app store. Also on the smart TV, which is a great way to watch the HD and 4K video content. So I know a lot of pilots like to watch the uh, video lessons on uh, Apple TV or Roku, Fire TV, et cetera. And then they like to use their mobile phone or their iPad to go and do the test preparation. And it saves your progress. Everything syncs back and forth. So you can bounce around and use whatever platform you'd like. So with that, let's dive in and really get to the core of this to show how to use the course to best prepare for everything. So here we are, this is the online version that we're gonna focus on today. So when you first log in, you'll be presented with the video training menu. And there are really six main chapters, and this is the place to start for those that are new and wanna start getting ready, again, not just for the knowledge test, but for flight training and, and uh, the ground school overall. But basically you start with chapter one here, your first few hours. You're gonna dive into each video one by one. And I'm not gonna play a video here, but I wanna bring up a lesson just to show you how to best use this, because um, this is really where the foundation begins for preparing for the knowledge test. <clears throat> You're gonna watch the video here. They range from five to 10 minutes. Again, these are lots of 3D animations built around the airport environment, how to control the airplane, all that kind of good stuff. So very engaging, it'll keep your attention. You have review notes here to cover the key important parts of the lesson. Next, you have a video review quiz. This is a, a great feature here. Uh, so as you answer a question, let's say we'll get it right, it gives you instant feedback here, correct or incorrect, based on the uh, X or the check mark. But what you can do here when you do a, a review quiz uh, question is hit play explanation. And that's gonna jump you right to the section of the video that covers that question. So a great way to bring some of this content to life and make sure you're getting the key learning points out of that video. And as I go through these, I can click another play explanation button and you're gonna see the content. <clears throat> so it really brings to life visually uh, what you're gonna experience. And then when you get back out to the airport, the, really the benefit there is being prepared and having seen all these things for the, the not seeing it for the first time when uh, the airplane's running and the flight lessons uh, is going on. You have a full transcript here of the uh, section. So you can read that as well if you wanna go even more in depth for those that like to read. Related content, quick access to each of the FA handbook chapters that correspond to that. And then lastly, one of our newest features are interactive scenarios. Uh, there's about 20 of these spread throughout the course. And what these allow you to do is go in and interact with the content that you just learned about. So this lesson here, we're learning about airplane flight controls. It's gonna ask you and teach you a couple of things and then ask you to interact with the airplane. So in this case, it's asking to identify the ailerons. I can click on that. That's correct. Now identify the elevator. If I click on the wrong flight control, it's gonna identify what it is, but tell me why, it's, uh, what the uh, incorrect answer was. Try again, and then we'll select the correct one. So that's the component uh, kind of flow of a lesson, essentially. Watch the video, review the notes, take the review quiz, read up and follow up with any related content from the FAA training materials, and then explore the interactive scenarios to put it all into practice. So that's your first step, uh, about 17 or 18 hours of video content there by the time you go through all six main chapters. 
And I would highly recommend you do that before you even step foot into the test preparation section. <clears throat> you'll be able to watch your progress here on the left-hand side. Uh, here we've watched 1% of the videos, so you'll see that go from zero to 100, obviously, as you complete that training. And you can do this, again, on your smart TV. You can do it on your iPhone, your iPad, your Android. As long as you're signed into your user account, it'll all stay in sync and allow you to progress uh, naturally wherever is most convenient. Now, let's move ahead. You've now completed all of your video training. And I will say that's not going to be the last time you're in the video training. Definitely recommend you're going to go back and either search for videos or uh, come back later to review certain areas as you progress through your flight training at the airport. <clears throat> but definitely lay the foundation by going through all that uh, start to finish. So now in the left-hand menu, you can see we're in the test prep section. Start always by reading the tips at the top here. And we'll go through those, which is to first study each category of questions. As you go through the questions, you can mark them so you can save questions for later review. And we even have modes here that allow you to just focus on studying marked questions or questions you answered incorrectly. You can then do some quick review so you can choose random questions or we also have a smart study mode where it'll focus on your weaker areas. Then once you've been exposed to all the questions in the database, uh, roughly a thousand of them, um, then it's time to start taking practice FAA tests. Um, my biggest strong suggestion, don't jump right into FAA practice tests. Do that after you've studied all the questions first. This won't expose you to everything and it's going to end up causing you to miss a lot of the content. So save the practice tests for the very last part. Your goal here, uh, once you get through all that, is to earn at least two FAA practice scores of 80% or greater. And you'll see those will be tracked over here on the left-hand side. Your top two scores will always show here. So for this test account, uh, one of our scores was 93 and one of our scores was 100. And then assuming we had completed all the video training, we could then download that knowledge test endorsement right from the course here. And that's automated. So if you complete this at Saturday night at 3 a.m., <clears throat> you'll be ready to download it and uh, go ahead and schedule your test the next day. So we're going to go through and follow the, the kind of four steps here to show what that looks like along the way. So first thing we'll do is start a new study session. And our first goal here is to focus just on the categories of questions. So we're going to select specific categories. You have two modes of uh, questions, and we're going to focus for now just on question mode. For those wondering, you can explore later. Flashcard mode is like a Quizlet presentation, so you'll just see the question <clears throat> in a visual flashcard. You'll tap it. It'll uh, flip over to show you the answer. So it's a good way to focus outside of seeing the answers by just focusing on the question. And if we have time here, I'll do a quick demo of that as well. Now, which category should I select? Uh, recommendation here, just go through start to finish if you want to go alphabetically, or you can go through and do it based on where you're at in your flight training. Uh, there's really no right or wrong answer here. Uh, some pilots like to come in and start with what they learned first in the course, like the uh, pre-flight preparation, as it relates to, say, maybe airspace or pilot qualifications, some things you've earned, or, uh, learned earlier on. Uh, we'll do airspace here for now. So you can select one category. You can see this will be 31 questions. I could select the entire um, big category to select all of those if I wanted to. Or I can go through and select every category. Um, my recommendation here, probably keep these to ma a manageable size, uh, probably no more than 100 questions per session. And really, you know, maybe even 40 or 50 makes more sense. Um, so we'll do airspace for this example. So I selected that category, come up here and hit the start button. And we presented with the question and answer layout, just like you'll see on the actual test. Now here we're in a study mode. So the main difference is when I answer a question, it's gonna tell me whether it's right or wrong right away. So you get some instant feedback. So what's the uh, answer here? We selected the second one, which is the correct answer. We got real-time feedback with the color coding and the check marker X. And also, you're going to have an explanation for every single answer. I highly recommend as you go through these, even if you really think you know the material inside and out, read that explanation for the correct answer to reinforce the material. If you want to go one step further, these are links here to the actual FA training content for that uh, particular resource. We'll see what happens here since we're loading up in the new tab. And now what this just did is open a new tab in my web browser uh, with that actual content. So here we are on the airspace chapter. And I could go in and now read a lot more information on airspace if I really wanted to. 
So we'll jump back to our test prep view here. You'll see links to the Federal Aviation Regulations, the AIM, really any FAA resource uh, that, that covers more information on that topic. Uh, and the good thing here is FAA doesn't pull test content from random abstract sources. These all come from official FAA materials. So it makes it for a nice study reference to kind of go back, read the explanation. And a lot of times that'll be more than enough for you to understand the answer in question. But if you want to go into more detail, you're going to read the exact verbiage for where that question came from. And many times the FAA and their questions and answers literally uses the, the verbiage directly from the FAA source, which helps out a lot. Now, as you go through this mode and you answer some correctly and incorrectly, biggest recommendation here is don't change your answer to all correct. Leave your answer selected as you first picked it because you're going to grade this session and you want to build up some analytics and some data um, that help, again, identify your stronger and weaker areas. So if you get it wrong, don't just go back and select the correct answer. Leave it incorrect. Read the explanation. Read why it's incorrect. <clears throat> read the explanation for the correct answer, again, to learn the material. You don't want to make that same mistake again. If you come across the question, you get it incorrect, but it's you still don't fully understand, there's a couple things you can do here. First one is to mark the question. That'll allow you to come back to it later. It will also allow your instructor to see your marked questions in their CFI portal as well. So lots of lots of things happen when you mark a question, and you can always come back, obviously, and unmark it. The other option here is to use your notes function. So in the bottom right of the screen, there's a section called My Notes. When you bring that up, come up here, and this will be, it kind of looks like the, the notes layout on an iPhone or an Android device. You have your menu on the left-hand side and your content over here. When I go to make a new note from the uh, test prep section, it's going to include a link directly back to that question. Um, so I can type in, ask my CFI later about this. Why is the answer 4,000 feet? So that'll automatically save to your course. You have a link here. And then when you click on that link later, it'll actually open up a new view of just that question. Uh, so it's a good way to come back and say, hey, you know, here's the question, here's the answer. I just don't get it. You know, whether it's an instructor, uh, could be a mentor, et cetera. Um, but a great way to, to keep track of what you're doing in your course uh, for later review. As I play games with a Chrome web browser. So use the My Notes feature, save the question, use the mark function to mark the question, two different levels there of how to save it. Okay, so up here at the top, you can see we only answered five of the questions, but that's all we're going to do for now just for uh, this exercise. <clears throat> After answering all the questions, leaving the selections like you had at the very first time, we'll now use the grade session option. And you'll get real-time feedback on how you did on that session. So in this case, we did 10% correct because we didn't answer you know, roughly 26 of the questions. You can go back and do a lot of different things here. And these same options are available later, so it's not like you're going to have to do this now or, or never do it again. But you can go back and review just the missed questions. You can review all the questions. You can even start a new study session from different types of questions there. So I did this section of 31 questions. I can go back and create a new session of just the correct, the marked, or the incorrect questions. I think the most popular option and most useful is to go back right away and just focus on the incorrect questions. Um, so by leaving them incorrect and you graded it, it gives you that flexibility to go back and just do a follow-up session right away to reinforce those questions and study them again. Now here in the study history, our session was saved. You see your score, you can go back and review it. If you expand this window, it'll give you a category breakdown. Uh, in this case, we only did a, a pre-flight category, but if you did a random selection of questions or a practice test, you'd be able to see a lot more information here. And here are those options again to start a new session based on that. So I can go back again and start a session based on questions answered incorrectly. <clears throat> again, very effective in my opinion. So let's progress forward. Let's say you've gone through now, and I'm going to show a couple of different screens here. Let's say fast forward a couple of days or a couple of weeks. You studied all the categories of questions. One nice feature here on the study history, you'll see a button called Advanced Category Breakdown. And what this will show you is your performance across uh, all the different categories and how you've done. And it color codes it. These are the same big category groups we saw on the main page. 
<clears throat> and if I'm looking at this, I can see that my performance in the navigation section, for example, is much uh, weaker than other areas. So visually and statistically, I can go back now and I'm going to go back and just focus on navigation questions for now. Uh, so that's a good tool there to use to help see how you've done on past sessions on a high level that might focus you on where to go next. Some other options here in the different category types, you can do random questions. That's a great option, especially on a mobile phone or iPad. You just have 10 minutes and you want to do a quick study session. You can pick 10 or 15 questions and, and go about it that way. Even more efficiently is to use the start sp uh, study feature. This will go through and analyze questions you've answered incorrectly and categories that you've performed weekly on and create a session based just on those, uh, that, those types of questions. We looked at marked questions before and why you want to do that, because this allows you here to go back and just make a study session from your marked questions to review those. And as you mark and unmark them, they'll be removed from the database on the back end. Uh, so you can systematically go through, after you mark a bunch of questions, take them again, study them, and then unmark them. Great tool here is the incorrect questions. So you've gone through all the categories and you've done a bunch of study sessions. Now you can focus on only the questions you've always answered incorrectly. Great tool to isolate some of the weaker areas. And then a final one that's, that's kind of helpful in a special use case as you prepare for the test and at the very end, I always recommend going back and just doing this one last time before you take the actual test, which is questions I've never seen, just to make sure there's none that have slipped through the cracks in the system <clears throat> or possibly that we've added in the back end since you first started your studying. And I'll make sure that you're exposed to those ahead of time. And then lastly, question search. Um, you know, let's say you you took a test or you took a study session and you just couldn't remember uh, what the question was or what category it was in. Um, you can type in keywords here, like ADSB, for example, and make a study session of the questions that reference ADSB. Uh, so helpful tool there to go about creating a session another kind of way. So, okay, so let's say now we've gone through all the categories. We're feeling really good about where we're at. Now's the time to take an FAA practice test. So you can take as many of these as you want. Uh, I wouldn't go overboard. If, if you're going through the system the correct way and you've done your studying categories of questions and you're just focused on your weaker areas, you really shouldn't need to take probably more than three or four of these practice tests. You should be doing pretty well on these. Um, this isn't the time to learn the material. It's the time to test your knowledge of the material overall. Now, the difference here, as you answer a question, it's not going to give you any real-time feedback. You just answer your question, move on to the next one. No explanations, no yes or no's, just a selection of the answer choice and move on. So kind of keep in mind too, you have two hours to take the actual test. So if you wanna time yourself, that's a good way to go about this just to see where you're at. If a question has a figure referenced in it, you'll have it right here accessible. It'll show up in a, a preview view, or in this case, you may wanna open it up in a bigger tab uh, to see more details about it. And when you do that, you'll have the question displayed at the top of the figure also for quick reference. So goal here, go through and answer all the questions, make sure you're happy with everything, grade the session, and your goal is to get a much higher score than 5%. Uh, but at this point, you'll likely be in the high 80s or low 90s. Get a couple of those practice test scores over 80, and you will then have met the requirements for your knowledge test endorsement. And that's really all there is to it at that point for the, uh, the knowledge test prep. Uh, bare minimum might take you a week, uh, depending on how often you're doing this. Um, some takes two to three weeks <clears throat> based on your part-time study habits. Something else to look for, we're always ad adding new questions to the course based on feedback from students and feedback from FAA on what kind of subject matter is being tested. The top right up here, keep an eye on your notifications where you'll see where we uh, push up in, uh, new inbox messages based on new training content added to the video course. But we also push updates based on new test prep questions. Uh, so come in here and check this out. For example, here's an update we pushed in March. And then if you click on the button here, it'll bring up a nice guide of all the most recent FAA test prep questions that were added. And you'll be able to see them here, study them, and even link to the course directly uh, from the, the uh, questions. So we try to keep everyone up to date as we add new content. And that's the place you're going to find out about that. Uh, we also push emails out with that test prep update PDF when it uh, becomes available. Okay, with that, I'm going to switch back to our presentation, go over some test taking tips here to wrap this, <clears throat> excuse me, wrap this up. 
So again, your goal to get to 80% test scores or better. Um, and that's our course minimum. You may wanna hold yourself to a higher standard. A lot of schools we work with do have higher minimum requirements. Some schools require three 90%, for example. Um, so maybe that's a better goal to strive for. 280% scores works really well for uh, our course here and our students. Uh, we keep track of reported actual test scores. And the average test score coming back right now is in the 88 to 89% range. So students are much more prepared in that minimum level. Uh, but don't, don't be afraid to hold yourself to a higher standard as you progress through the, uh, the course. Next up, some test prep tips and tricks. These are general strategy for really any knowledge test, but they apply here just as well. And first, that is to go through and answer the easy questions first. Uh, if question number one is preparing or planning a long cross country and takes five calculations, uh, don't waste all your brain power and effort on that one question. Come back to that one later. Find the ones that are simple to understand and answer, like a basic uh, weather report, as we see here. Also, make sure to read the question twice in detail before you even look at the answer options. These tests are designed to have some misleading uh, false answers mixed in there. Uh, so some of them may, if you don't read it correctly, may look correct, uh, but it's really not. So my goal here is always read the question, think about it, what, what is the answer, and then go back, look at the answer choices, and hopefully one of those matches up with what you have in mind already. But don't let the other answers try to mislead you by just jumping right to the answers without fully thinking about and understanding the question first. Although there's less of these, there still might be a couple cross-country planning questions. Uh, <clears throat> the recent feedback we've been getting from students is the amount of calculations and uh, computation questions has decreased in the last year, uh, but I think there still might be a couple that could pop up. And one of the things that'll get you is you will have to measure a distance on one of these sectional charts. And again, these sectional charts are printed in a book and they're all different scales. So it's not like you can just take your plotter directly on the chart like you could as if it were a, a real paper sectional chart or if you're measuring electronically on an iPad. But what they do is they provide a scale here at the bottom so you can see we have nautical miles, statute miles, and kilometers. It's probably hard to see here through the presentation. Um, but let's say you had to measure a distance between 0.4 and 0.5. What I'll do here, I won't even use a plotter. I'll just take a piece of paper and put tick marks over 4 and 5, and then bring it down to the scale here to read the nautical mile distance. That way you know you're reading the scale that's relative to that actual chart. Because what you'll find, you'll flip the page to another sectional chart, and that scale might be bigger or smaller. Um, so you're going to want to use the scale printed on each chart as you answer that question. Same thing here with, the, as I mentioned before, when it comes to calculations. Don't even look at the answer choices. Go ahead and, and perform the calculation on the chart, your E6B, your calculator. Come up with your answer, and then find the one that looks closest to what they offer there. Um, they should match up. Uh, good thing is the distractors, the, the false answers, are typically far enough away that, that it's not going to be a rounding error within a couple feet. Um, that used to be the case. Actually, some of them were really close, and it was kind of not practical to have misleading answers so close. But if you come up with the correct answer ahead of time, it should match up with what you see on the screen. We're going to wrap up here to talk about what you need to do to schedule your test. So the first thing you need to do is register for a FAA tracking number, commonly referred to as an FTN number. You do that on the FAA's IACRA website. There it is there, iacra.faa.gov. And that FTN number will stay with you for all of your flight training career, flight instructor career, if you go to that. It's how you are associated and identified with FAA on their training certification system. After you have your FTN number, then you're gonna locate a testing facility and register for a test at the PSI. Uh, that's the FAA's official third-party testing provider. And there's the website there, faa.psiexams.com. You will create an account and register for the test at the selected facility. And then again, what to bring, uh, your test endorsement, which would be provided from the Learn to Fly course, uh, from Sporties, or if you're going to go the, the old route, which would be from your flight instructor. If you're a U.S. citizen, bring your government-issued ID card or passport, and then your E6B flight computer and plotter. And again, the product today we're reviewing to prepare was the uh, Sporties Learn to Fly course, uh, available for uh, demo or purchase at sporties.com courses.